Hi guys, Pete here, N6QW, and what we're looking at is an experimental receiver that I hope to turn into a transceiver here in uh, the next uh, several weeks or several months. And basically what it is is a, uh, is a main board that came out of a 30 meter CW transceiver that I built uh, about four years ago. This is the subject of an article in QRP Quarterly. It uses uh, BF991s, uh, two of them, on either side of this six pole homebrew crystal filter and these are bi-directional so by reverse biasing uh, the, there's signal steering that you can make either the signal go this way or signal go this way there's a tough one back here uh, double balance mixer it's the front end and uh, for a product detector we had originally in the article was an NE602 I've since removed the crystal that was in here and the self-excited NE602 is a carrier oscillator and I've replaced it with, uh, this is an SI5351. So I'm taking the BFO signal out of the SI5351 and fitting it into pin 7 on the NE602. And then the LO signal is fed into the LO port on the TUF1. So essentially we have uh, BF991 uh, dual gate MOSFET, BF991 dual gate MOSFET, NE602. I have an active decoupler on this uh, into the power supply to take care of any potential noise generated by the OLED, which is the OLED right here. And I've got a uh, Arduino Nano driving the SI5351, driving the display here on the OLED. And uh, the audio amplifier consists of a 2N3904 driving an LM386. On the front end, to give a little <coughs> amplification, there's a single 2N tunable uh, gain. A variable gain um, 2N3904 it's the RF amplifier and so uh, a pair of 42 IF123 back-to-back -back IF transformers here is the bandpass filter they're coupled with uh, about uh, 4.7 picofarad uh, the capacitor is removed from them and so there's 120 picofarad across the tune windings and uh, the coil value is about 4.5 microhenry so these are tunable to give you the 40 meter bandpass so uh, not much to this, but one of the constant uh, situations that come up that people complain about is noise being being developed by the OLED. And I can tell you, when I built this, uh, I wasn't experiencing the, the noise that other people are building. Now essentially what it's doing is being operated off the 12-volt rail. Here you see the 12-volt connection just kind of haywired. This is tape-wired to 12 volts, goes over the power supply. And then there's an onboard regulator uh, located underneath the Nano, which is a, an 8-volt DC uh, three-terminal regulator. So I take the raw 12 volts in, run it through the regulator, and that goes into the VN on the uh, Arduino Nano. And then the uh, Nano itself develops uh, 5 volts uh, DC, which drives the uh, SI5351 board and also provides uh, 5 volts as a part of the I2C. This is connected I2C style. So it's connected to pins A, A4 and A5 on the Arduino Nano. And uh, we have a standard encoder here. Pin A3 has got the uh, step button. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see this too well, but it says N6QW 40 meter single sideband CW transceiver 7051. And the step is uh, 100 hertz. Now, as I said, people were uh, m making statements that they built this stuff. I've received personal emails said, uh, you know, you can't be, you can't have a situation without any noise. As an added measure, I have this active decoupler. So the 12 volts that goes to the audio amplifier, first of goes into the uh, collector of a 2N3904, and then there's bias, a 10K bias from the collector to the base. And then on the base is a 100 microfarad electrolytic with the ground side to the ground plane. Then out of the emitter, it feeds that. So you actually have a capacitance multiplier. So that 100 looks a lot bigger. So it's like having a big old fat capacitor in there to clean up any noise. But uh, I'm going to turn the volume up here a little bit. And I'm going to do a, a simple test. A simple test. Uh, you know, earlier you, you may have uh, a situation where uh, you would find that... Uh, You'd have, um, oh, I don't know, uh, a case where uh, you'd have uh, noise, but it's masked by the audio signal. And so uh, what we've been able to do here uh, is to uh, uh, pull the antenna. That's the real test. If you pull the antenna and get no noise, then you're not hearing it. So first I want to turn up the volume a little bit. 
There's the antenna. And you're just hearing some uh, some of the things uh, from some of the wires being the back and forth, but I, I don't hear any big major noise as such. So so whatever's whatever's happening here is taken care of pretty well. There's a little bit of a grounding issue here because it's just all haywired together, but it's pretty quiet without without that uh, antenna connected. And when you put the antenna on, I guess uh, of course you're going to get a very loud signal. So. So I think you can see that uh, it's doing pretty well here, and this is down in the CW band. The uh, filter has not been optimized. It's been optimized for single side band because I replaced the original four pole. Uh, since this was a CW transceiver, the original four pole was with the six pole, and it's now uh, been broadened a bit for better for side band. Uh, whereas the four pole that was originally in there was uh, set up for um, uh, use as a, a CW filter. So let's tune up into the, uh, I'm going to put this on 1 kilohertz. We're now tuning 1 kilohertz. And it's relatively quiet between stations. So the uh, BFO signal is being fed into pin 7 on the NE602 and uh, out of the uh, SI5351 board is a, uh, a 10 nanofarad both on the LO and the BFO and that gets fed right into the board. So this is experimental receiver, OLED noise. And we're using the BFO. The earlier, um, the earlier video that I made uh, with this uh, board had the crystal uh, BFO, and this one has the SI5351. Swap net. Forty meter swap net. Seventy two forty. It's like ninety for it. You can get a hold of my cat, eight one eight three eight eight three eight zero six. Any breaks for mine? Yeah, you're welcome there. Okay, this is Pete. And 6QW, and we're going to end this video.